Good evening. I hope everybody is well. And yes, your eyes do not deceive you. I am running solo dolo tonight, um, which is all good because I've done it before many, 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 many moves ago. We, you know, we've been on YouTube for about seven years, and I can recall at least one show that I actually did by myself. And it's no big deal. Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll have some people to join. Uh, Matt is actually out and about. He's on the town tonight. And um, the rest of the guys, apparently, I am the only one out of the Common Call crew that don't have plans or something else to do. But it's all good. So, uh, anyway, I wanted to go ahead. Since we said this was going to be an open night, we haven't been on in quite some time. So I wanted to go ahead and at least get on and then uh, we could get this out of the way. We got some stuff planned in the future. Um, but when we're going to actually drop that is kind of in the air right now. Um, we're going to be doing another show with Rico. You know, in Black History Month, we actually did the show. Um, and he showcased a lot of black characters on comic books and everything. Shout out to Rico for that. Um, go check him out on, on YouTube, Black Key Comics. Um, about to get some music started, folks. Looks like we got some comics coming in. Uh, so, you, yeah, Uncle Al, aka Dusty Rick Brown, aka Capsule Corp. Tim Petroye, um, is on the scene with y'all. Let me turn this down a little bit. And I'm hoping everybody in the chat so far is doing okay. Let me get to the chat. Salute. What's up, Black Supernova, man? Good to see you, bro. Um, glad you could join us, man. Yeah, I'm running ISO tonight, man. So, you know, it's all good. Like I said, it's one of the things, man. It, it happens. So, um, the show probably is going to be a little bit short if nobody else joins. So, you know, it's all gravy. But anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and do uh, what well, I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, I know I'm a thoroughfare. Um, people, they keep, if they keep trickling in, I acknowledge anybody in the chat. If you're in the chat and hadn't said anything, I'm glad to hear you could have been anywhere else, but you decided to chill out with the Common Call crew, minus one, or minus a few, uh, except for me. Um, anyway, everything is good. I hope everything is, is well with everyone. Um, I don't want to say this real quick before I get started with a whole bunch of stuff. This we don't have no sponsors, and I mean you know we're small YouTube channels. If we did have a sponsor, I would want this to be our sponsor. I don't think we'll get copyright struck for showing you juice on the chat. This is some delicious juice, y'all. You know. I'm working on my health and working on my weight and loss and weight and stuff. So I've been trying to find alternatives to drink juice instead of, you know, sodas and stuff. Ain't nothing like the natural juice like you make yourself. I have a juicer, but you know. Uh, what's up, Philly Born 21, man? I'm glad to see you, bro. I don't know if you've been here before, but welcome. Typically, it's more than one person, but everybody else is like preoccupied with some things and whatnot. Some may be on some adventures tonight. I have no idea. We may have some folks join. And if so, then that's cool. Um, but if not, we just gonna run it the way we normally run it. And, you know, like I said, we probably get done a little bit earlier. But in any event, Philly Boy, what up? Black Supernova. All right. So let me get to our banners here and then let me get to our first segment of the night. And I want to give a shout out to Akira Toriyama. I thought the actual thing was going to fill up the whole screen, but you saw me like in the background and stuff. But shout out to Akira Toriyama. Um, of course, he passed away March the 1st. Um, I don't typically mark out for celebrities and all that kind of stuff, but Kira Toriyama is like in a category with Chadwick Boseman. Um, even though Chadwick Boseman, you know, he he left a mark, a short mark in his life. It was an indelible mark. 
uh, because outside of him actually playing the roles of James Brown and um, Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, and of course T'Challa, he just seemed like he was the upstanding guy. So when he passed away, that 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 kind of did something to me. Um, and the same for Akira Toriyama. Um, Akira Toriyama was one of them cats that you know I had already been acclimated to anime back in the day because I'm old as dirt, but. You know, when Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, when they first came on the scene and I was introduced to that, it actually opened up a whole new avenue of anime. And, you know, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later on and hope that some other people will join. If not, I'll just go on my little, you know, I'll tribute to Akira Toriyama. But yeah, he was one of them dudes that really kind of shaped me. And you hear this all the time, but I'm going to show y'all something later on in the show. Some of y'all might trip out on if you if you're in my age range, then yeah, you might not. But I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you something that um shows you like how strong I was when it came up to Akira Toriyama. Feel it more 21. Let me tell you something, brother. I ain't trying to sound like comics explain, but let me tell you something, brother. Oh yeah, man. I have watched X Men '97 three times since it actually dropped Wednesday, and the only reason why I haven't watched it any more than I have is because of adulting you know work and running errands and all that kind of stuff man bro i mean it is it is man if those two episodes are actually any indication of how the season is gonna go bro we're gonna be in for a ride man. you know i'm a diehard x-men fan i know you I haven't seen you before but you might have been on some shows in the chat but man i'm a diehard x-men fan man like 90 percent of my collection is x-men my um Volume one run uh, of X Men from episode, or excuse me, issue one to five forty four, is about ninety five percent complete. I have about maybe twelve more books before I actually had a complete run. New Mutants Volume One, it's got Excalibur Volume One, it's got X Factor Volume One, it's got. So I'm a diehard X Men fan. So yeah, that that stuff is some good stuff, man. What's going on, Chef? How you doing, brother? Glad to see you make it, man. Uh, but anyway, we're about to go ahead and get started. And let me get to uh, our branding. And I'm going to run this first piece. And we will go from there. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. All right, here we go. You must be out of your goddamn mind. But my prices are reasonable. What? Oh, there it go. There. All right, folks, so we're about to get started with this particular segment. Now, the first thing I want to show y'all is not necessarily a you must be out your damn mind in the term that is like a crazy asinine price. It's basically, I, I came across this and I just wanted to show everybody how much of a travesty that X Factor 6, X Factor 6 get treated like a runaway slave. And I hope that's not politically incorrect to whomever's watching this, but, but I've said this before, it's like Rodney Dangerfield, it gets no respect. Now, this was the actual bid as of earlier today. Now, yeah, it's got four, four days on it, and it's probably going to get a little bit higher than that. But at the same time, man, like the first appearance of Apocalypse, this dude selling a lot of it right now. It's at $81 get in in four days. I surmise it probably gets up to maybe three, four hundred bucks, which in that case, if I'm guesstimating right, it's still kind of undercutting the book because it's 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 been an undervalued book for the longest. For the longest. So I just wanted to show that. So anybody that might want a few copies of X Factor 6, first appearance of Apocalypse, they look pretty clean. As a matter of fact. So you know, I don't know what the grade would be in regards to these books, but yeah, I mean, it, it's there's some clean looking books. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get to the crux of this particular. Oh my God, what's up, Apollo? Hey man, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised though. I honestly wouldn't be surprised, but I mean, it was all what it was. It had already been an undervalued book though. Serious business because that and Sinister's first appearance kind of fell up under the radar in many cases. So maybe um, Ivan Ooze killed it. Like, you know, maybe he killed it in, you know, Apocalypse is right for the taking. So, I mean, if you don't have this book, I'm, 
you might want to go ahead and jump on it. You might want to go ahead and jump on it. But glad you could join us, Apollo. All right, so we about to get to the nitty gritty. This right here. Now, when we do this segment, you must be out your damn mind. It doesn't necessarily mean that certain things are like I, the, the the stratosphere when it comes to price. Some things I feel like are just really ridiculous. Now, while I was actually coming up with stuff for this particular segment, I came across this. Now, everybody, in, if you don't, you know, even if you're not a fighting game fanatic like I am and many of the panelists on the Comic Call crew, you play Marvel vs. Capcom 2, right? So, you would know if you played the home console version, whether it be PS2, Xbox, Dreamcast, it is not hard to unlock characters on Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Typically, all you got to do is go through the game with the base roster. And I think once you actually unlock some of the extra people, you just go through the game with them. And in most cases, you could take the, the, the rounds down to like one round and put on the easiest difficulty and bam, you out the door. I can't get, of course, this one ended, nobody actually bit. But I'm trying to figure out why would somebody, I mean, it's a hustle is a hustle. You got to make your money some kind of way, right? But why would even somebody, and that was improper English, but why would somebody even buy this? Like I said, you, you can get your little nephew or somebody, or your baby cousin, just play through this, and you can unlock the character. There's no sweat. So I thought that was kind of, you know, strange that somebody was trying to, you know, sell a, a memory card with the full roster unlocked. One good thing about this, though, if you're familiar with how things are right now with video games, uh, if this, this roster was out now, It'll probably been at least five or six DLC packs, and each one of them would have been about 20 bucks. So that's how the climate is right now when it comes down to downloadable content and you know all that jazz. So all right, to the next one. We got all kind of stuff on this list, y'all. Um, we got shirts, we got cups, we got comic books. Um, like Shirley Caesar say you name it. I saw this cup and I'm like, even the background looked ancient. Like they actually took this picture in the 70s and decided to use the Polaroid to post it on eBay. $75 for a Wonder Woman cup. It's amazing how people actually would get on eBay and try to sell whatever they can with the impression that it's vintage or it's gonna be popular or whatnot. So, I don't understand the allure. I mean, I know it's a market. Yeah, yeah, Black Supernova. Yeah, they need to go ahead and oops. They need to go ahead and throw it away. I mean, cause this right here, it ain't the move. But nowadays, when it comes down to anything comic books and stuff people man they pull out this stuff they got stored in the attic and they got premium prices for it this ain't this ain't even uh th this is the the tip of the iceberg because i put i put everything in like monetary order from the leak from the like the cheapest to the the, the 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 most expensive so there's some other stuff on here that will blow your minds but yeah this right here man it don't even make sense I mean, Wonder Woman, man, she is just. Ain't no way in the world, man. You couldn't pay me to, to drink out of this cup. Look at that. And see, this thing, you can't really look at the top. Let's see. You can't focus on. Uh, there you go. Look how nasty that cup is. They won't send the file off of the cup. Apollo, man, go ahead and put a bid in on it, bro. And you you can drink some nice country time strawberry lemonade out of this stuff. Yep. Yeah. And nope. I will pass on this. All right. Next up. Another one. Now I ain't never seen this cup before in my life. 
$129.99 for a rare Marvel Comics circa 1975-711 Slurpee Cup with Stanley on it. The man says, or whomever says, is in excellent condition. 1975. To put that into perspective, depending upon when this cup came out, I was four years old. Four years old when this cup came out. But he says it's in excellent condition. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. All I know is that it could be yours for $129.99. And no interest is paid in full in six months. 99 cents with PayPal credit. I can't even see somebody putting this on a credit card or even a payment plan. But there's a sucker born every minute. There's a lot of stand defense. Now, it would have, if it wouldn't have paid him to actually get this signed by Stanley, may he rest in peace, this cup probably would have been about 600 bucks. But I digress. But it's out there for the taking, folks. Next up, <laughs> he ain't lying. <laughs> man, it better be something, man. I mean, fine China or, or, or what they call it, China, something. Because uh, this ain't the move, bro. And this is definitely not the move either. 2020, Wonder Woman, 1984, Gal Gadot, Malaysia Theater Cup, unused, mega rare. Apparently, this cup, I don't know if, I, I didn't see Wonder Woman in the movie then, or did I? I can't remember. But apparently, from what I understand, this cup was limited over here in the States. But they dumped them over in Malaysia. So somebody apparently in Malaysia is trying to come up. $208.49 for a decent movie. Yeah, I get it. Y'all yeah, know didn't sign it. Got the Wonder Woman thing, and they did these cups for like the Avengers and Thor. Cause I got, I got one with Black uh, Widow, like as the topper, and I think I got one with Thanos. Uh, but yeah, yeah, two hundred and eight dollars and forty nine cent. That is not the move. That is not the move, folks. They are um, uh, open to a best offer though. Uh, three dollar shipping so yeah somebody is definitely out of out of their gourd or as i heard on a kung fu movie they're out of their skull all right next up now i'm a com i'm well i'm a comic book collector but this is comic books i also collect um video games retro video games a whole lot and I'm thankful I, I do that instead of smoking crack and you know, that fits and and stuff. But I have a copy of this game. But my manual is looking a little bit ragged and torn. So I'm like, hey man, let me go on eBay to see if I can find me a manual to replace the one I got. Ain't no way in the world. The reason why I say that is because this particular the game itself in decent condition with the with like the, the the game the manual the insert parts the back art back panel art you could buy the game for around the same price as this so it's 79.99 canadian 58.83 in us now in the world i'm paying no 58 almost 60 dollars for a main now one thing unfortunately with the with the retro market for video games it runs the same uh, gambit that um, that comic books do. You know, there's an influx in the market, people jacking up prices. It actually started with that dang um, pandemic. Because before the end, the games were dirt cheap all across the board. Sega Nintendo, Scott Sega Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Xbox, Wii, the whole lot. When the pandemic hit, people were at home, 
people start jacking the prices up for these the games and accessories and it ain't gone down since even before this dang inflation hit so but yeah there is no way under the sun that i will pay 60 bucks for this man it's in good shape don't get me wrong it looks good but it is not worth 60 dollars when you can get the game for around 60 70 dollars complete so yeah this would be a negative so you know what though i you know part of my uh my my spiel um apollo before everything shot up the the, the high hill i would actually go to pawn shops now that was one place that you can go and get games super duper cheap because they were just sitting there games are sitting there like i mean and, and, and i'm talking about games now that are actually worth a pretty penny you could get for like dirt cheap pennies on the dollar like man like to say but nowadays man even the pawn shop bro they try to get over on you man i seen a few uh gamecube games at a pawn shop here in macon man, i said dude somebody out they score bro because Ain't no way in the world, man. You you charging prices that's actually more expensive than eBay. And you know, if your if your prices are higher than eBay, bro, you 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 got a problem, man. So there's something going on, or the Yakuza are after you, and you owe them a whole bunch of money or something. But uh, yeah, this is the negative right here. Ain't no way in the world I will pay this much for this manual. I would say a decent price for this manual. I would say maybe 15, 20 bucks. And that's stretching it just based on the description. Decent condition, dense and marked bumper here is my aware. Registration card still attached. And that's another thing too, y'all. When you're dealing with a lot of retro games, registration card for some reason, it adds extra value. I guess because you can say that it's a complete game. But uh, yeah, 15, 20 bucks most. If, if it was that, I would have jumped on it. But since it was, no, nah, I'm good. I am good. Next up. Now this right here is, you know, shout out to Akira Toriyama. Uh, I put, put this on the actual list because you know, if you're familiar with the show, we always post, um, you know, shirts and all kind of stuff. You know, people claim and stuff is vintage. Uh, this particular shirt, uh, if I'm not mis mistaken, in X, I'm sure, because I remember X, shout out to X. X had one of these shirts, but I want to say it, it might have been Vegeta. I can't recall. But there, there used to be a retail store, I don't know if they're still open, called Spencer. They were kind of like the Hot Topic. I don't know which store was better, Hot Topic or Spencer. But they had this shirt. Um, they had Goku. Um, and the Goku shirt was like red, black, and gray. And the Vegeta shirt. And then they had a Trunks shirt. And then they had a shirt with Trunks, Vegeta, and Goku on it. Because at the time, I want to say over in the States, they were right at the sale saga. Um, so I was like, okay, let me check and see if they got this shirt. Um, and they did. Now, oddly enough, I only saw two um, entries on eBay for this shirt. This one was 160, the other one was 100. And there was another one that I saw when I just did a, a Google search for $175. Now, the kicker to that is, I'm gonna blow myself up for a quick second. Not literally. I actually bought this shirt. It does not have the tag because I took it off with the intentions on on uh, wearing it. Now, I didn't wear it because it was too small. It's a 2X and at the time I needed a 3X. So it just stayed in the closet. So I'm at a point where I'm at an impasse. I actually be on You Must Be Out Your Damn Mind. Cause with all these people selling these shirts and stuff, these vintage shirts, trying to get eight, nine, ten. 10 racks for these shirts. 
I might have to hold on to this shirt and sell it. But then again, what I thought about doing is just um, putting it in a clear frame. Whenever I get a house, which I don't know when that's going to be in my, um, you know, my man cave, I have a Jeter hanging up. But it's a dope shirt. I won't pay $160 for it. That tag's missing off of mine. Most I would probably, well, the most I pay, if I want to say, I may pay $30 for the shirt, maybe $40. But somewhere between that, I wish X was on because I know for a fact he had when well, he had a shirt, he had a, um, a Goku shirt from the opposite. Yeah, he might have had this shirt because I think he's more of a Vegeta fan than Goku. I know my brother, one of my brothers had the Goku shirt for sure. He bought the Goku, I bought the Vegeta. So, yeah, I figured I'd show that little fun thing to commemorate Akira Toriyama. Next up, this is ridiculous. Now, this actually teeters back on the whole you must be out your damn mind. The reason why I say that is because this particular book does not have any intrinsic value. The only reason why this book is it costs this much is because of X-Men 97. This is no key. This is just part. This is just a book in the run of Volume 1 X-Men run by Jim Lee. Um and um, not Stanley, but Chris Claremont. Uh, Mark Silvestri, if I'm not mistaken, was the artist on this book, the cover artist. And of course, as we like to point out, Disney movie rare, MCU, Wolverine, X-Men. There is nothing about this book that warrants 400 books, even at a 9.8. <laughs> Hey, we're going to touch on that. <laughs> yeah. We're going to touch on that later on, Apollo, man. Uh, that was some good, good stuff. But the first two episodes, man, I'm going to go ahead and break real quick. The first two episodes was like, Disney been running these shows where they dump pretty much everything at the same time, except for, you know, the, the Miss Marvel and all them shows and stuff like this was one instance where I wish they had actually dropped everything at the same time because I would have been watched everything from beginning to end. But I'm kind of glad they're doing it, you know, weekly episodic and stuff. I wish they were showing it on Saturday morning, but you know, you could actually wait until Saturday morning to watch it, I guess. But yeah, this book right here is not worth $389.99. Last I checked, um, this book at a 9.4 went for about maybe $110 somewhere around there. So a 9.8 shouldn't be too far off, maybe 180, 200 somewhere, which in my opinion, that's still too much for this book. Cause like I said, it's not a key book. It's a nice cover, but it, it ain't a key. All right, next up. This right here, going back to the issue of me being a, a retro fan as far as games and stuff. I actually bought this from GameStop. Shout out to GameStop for like 40 bucks when it came out. You now, the history behind this game, of course, Godzilla is popular now. You know, I've been a fan for forever since the 70s because I'm always dirt. But this particular game, what happened was is that it came out. This is a mediocre game. It's not one of the best games that's ever been released. It's okay. I mean, if you're a fan of Godzilla and Kaiju and stuff, it's cool. But what happened was, is that the game, of course, they stopped production. And PlayStation, because it was a PlayStation exclusive, they actually dropped this on the PlayStation Store. So when they dropped it on the PlayStation Store, you could buy the game for, I think, maybe $20, $30, somewhere around there. I didn't bother getting it because, of course, I had a physical copy. Well, they delisted the game. And if you're familiar with how things work, a lot of times if a game gets delisted, shoots the price up tremendously for any physical copies. I guess it depends on the game. Now, this game, this game here, uh, according to PriceChart.com, which is my bible for like retro games, used is probably running about 175, maybe 200 bucks, 250. So, like the 210 up there, that's probably a fair price for it. $600.98 is not the move. Somebody is definitely trying to pay off the mall. 
at, if this game is not worth it. So, I think I give y'all that little history lesson. You know, shout out to Godzilla. Mine is one for winning that VFX award for the Oscars, which I'm going to touch on later. But yeah, this, this game is not worth $600.98. Um, all right, we got a few more y'all, and then we're going to move on. This is the vintage t-shirt thing I was telling you about. Now, for one, this shirt is ugly. It has no alibi. And then if you look at the neck. Oh, oh. Can't zoom in no more. You can see some dirt stains right there. This is an ugly shirt. I mean, you know what? Let me just take that back. Because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. For me personally, at retail, I wouldn't have bought this shirt. It's real alone. And you can tell by the tag that it's been worn a few times, which of course is the reason why they call it vintage. $5,000 though, or best offer. And then it got you paying $6.15 for shipping. Folks, I don't know. I mean, would anybody in the chat pay five grand for this? I'm sure y'all wouldn't, because y'all are very fiscally responsible adults, individuals that pay your taxes. If you go to church, you go to church. If you don't, you don't. You know, you, you pay your light bill and your cell phone bills on time. No, $5,000, man. No, nah, they kick rocks. Bad for you. This is not the move. Next up. Captain Marvel, $2,200. I think this CBCS, yep, 5.0. They are definitely out of their mind with this one. There ain't no way under God's earth or sun, whatever you want to call it, that this particular book should be running for five, excuse me, $2,200. I actually looked this one up when I found it. Five and a half CGC goes for about four five hundred dollars maybe a little bit less than that captain marvel this version of marvel has not actually been prominent in 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 marvel if it was if anything it was the other marvel that died of cancer and i yeah this is a key but 2200 for a 5.0 that's a bigger reach in my opinion especially at a uh, at CBCS. But you know, a whole lot of weight is gravitas given to DTC books, but I don't see it. I don't see it. Oh, it ain't gonna let me scroll up. Nah. That's not the move for this one either. All right, y'all. We're down to the last two. I appreciate you sticking in there with me. I just wanted to pause for a quick second to let y'all soak this price in. It's another game that I own in my collection. I didn't pay no $9,999 for it in 99 cents. Even sealed, this game is not worth $10,000. And if it was worth that much, <laughs> I would think that it would at least have been graded, but it's not. Man, it's so many games out there, Apollo, that's supposed to be touted as the holy grail for retro games. Matter of fact, the last one I'm going to show you is something that Matt actually posted in our private chat yesterday, I think. And they got the word grill, just like a lot of these cats have MCU in their title for um, comics and stuff. But yeah, 
ten thousand dollars to actually come as one of the games. I don't know. I don't know about that, homie. All I know is that this is not worth no ten thousand dollar seal. And yeah, it's a sought after game now. I mean, a used copy of this game is gonna run you, depending on punk condition, anywhere from a hundred to about one fifty two hundred dollars. I like that Godzilla game. But nah, not no ten grand. Like I said, if this game was worth that much, it should be graded. Just straight up. And you should be trying to sell it on Heritage Auction. You shouldn't be trying to sell it on eBay for 10 grand. Because ain't nobody in their right mind gonna pay 10 grand for this game on eBay. If that's the case, I will shrink wrap mine and I will sell it for seven thousand five hundred twenty-six dollars and twenty-two cents. Buy it now. Free shipping. Give it to you. But no. It ain't worth no 10 grand. All right. Last but not least, it's the Coupe de Grau telling you about Apollo. Fifth. Oh, no. Oh, wow. I don't know if people are actually bidding on this to just jack the price up. It's kind of hard to say because at first when Matt actually posted it in the group, it was at fifty-one thousand dollars. So now it's actually shot up to eighty-two with one hundred and twenty-four bids in the end of an hour. I'm gonna have to keep track of this because I honestly don't believe that somebody would actually pay eighty-two thousand dollars for a copy of Castlevania from the Nintendo eight bit. And this is the this is the kick in the teeth right here. Uh, so come on now, Fed coat. They bought it brand new for Fed coat, twenty seven dollars and eighty seven cents. I will tell you this though, if they do sell for eighty two thousand dollars, but that is the ultimate lick of the century. And this dude, whoever sells this, should be a day trader. It's sealed. It looks good. I mean, I'm sure everything is in there that should be. But 82 grand, no. Again, this is one of the situations where if this game was worth that kind of money, it should be graded. It should have a legitimate grade on it. And then they should be at these high dollar auction um, uh, at the auctioneers to try to sell it. Because selling this on $82,000 on eBay to move but it's got 124 bids. But I've seen I've seen stuff get uh, marked as far as jacked up as far as bids because people just <laughs> they hate going petty. So you know. All right, folks. Well, that's it for this particular segment. Um, thank you for joining me, and we're gonna move on to the next segment really quick. Let me go ahead and get that primed up right quick. And looks like this probably is going to be one of the shortest, uh, <laughs> one of the shortest live streams we had in a long time on a Saturday night. But anyway, let me go ahead and drop this right quick. Cover price top ten. You all know how we do on Saturdays. We go over the cover price top 10. Chris, what's up, man? Where you at, bro? <laughs> hey, man. $82,000, bro. It ought to come with the recipe for holy water, uh, extra systems, and, and everything. Like, you should actually get Simon Belmont's whip. As soon as you crack that sucker open, it just materializes, like, just teleporting your hands crosses that he threw and everything real talk we good to see you in the chat chris all right so we're on the cbsi the heritage is an auction uh, house and heritage sells a bunch of like high-end stuff like stuff like action comics number one um artwork and not just comic book stuff. I mean, anything that's got like some weight to it in terms of like 
price is heritage auction just just type in when you get a chance google heritage auction and just type in comic books it'd be some of the rarest comic books out there um movie posters all kinds of stuff man they got some they have some really nice stuff but some of that stuff is hella expensive too happy wedding anniversary chris man wish you and the spouse many more yeah but it's called heritage auction apollo yeah check it out all right so cbsi top 10 number 10 ultimate universe number one yeah they do everything apollo i mean games the uh, comic books uh toys if like i said anything that's got some substantial weight to it they it's on there man artwork movie posters maybe i got black exploitation movie posters i kid you not on heritage auction some of that stuff is rare like um uh music like concert posters back in the day otis red and james brown like uh artists like that the original posters you can see them on heritage auction <coughs> All right, Ultimate Universe number one. All right, so uh, essentially the Ultimate Universe has been rebooted in the Marvel landscape. And apparently this is one of the books that's on the top 10, I'm assuming because it's the number one. I don't know if this is a key or anything of that nature. It says Ultimate Universe number one kicked off a new universe, still going strong four months later. It features cameos of the new Black Panther and the new Momoko character based on. Okay. Top 10 primarily focused on Ultimate Spider Man, recently Ultimate Black Panther. This book is getting the recognition it deserves. Fans are tracking out earlier copies of this new Ultimate Universe as the book's reception has been overwhelmingly positive. We tracked 22 copies sold, a seven day trend, 114%, high value of $40 for a raw copy. Good grief. And a current new new mint uh, fair market value twenty nine dollars, bro. This book came out in January. Forty dollars high, twenty nine dollars in mint. Looks like we're circling back to where we was right after the pandemic, folks. Hopefully that ain't the case. Number nine, Nova number one. There's been some recent buzz in the news, comic book news and movie news, that they are against uh, Disney and Marvel Studios currently working on a Nova book. I mean, a Nova comic, good lord, a Nova movie. Okay, so yeah, Richard Ryder. We don't know if it's gonna be Richard Ryder. We don't know if it's gonna be um, Sam, whatever his last name is. Uh, but in any event, they're working on a Nova uh, movie. I just bought this. Um, Matter of fact, I bought a second copy of this in January for like 60 bucks. So I'm sure it's probably gonna jack back up again. So I bought it at the right time. All right, let's see. The movie news James Gunn took to Twitter to reveal this was not the case back in 2022. Uh, we're going to develop more than we will actually produce. And while the character may work now, guaranteed the final problem making to the silver screen and streaming service. Oh wow. Okay. Until then, fans have gambled on the character's first appearance. We tracked 19 copies sold a seven-day trend. Oh god. A high sale of eleven hundred four dollars for CGC 9.0 a raw fair market. Very good of $45. Yeah, I'll play a little bit more, but hey, mine was a pretty good copy. Number eight, New Guardians number one, DC. I've never seen this book in my life, but this artwork looks like the uh, Mark Bagley. I could be wrong. Let's see. Oh, I heard about this. Okay, so basically this book is, is on the charts because there's a <laughs> there's a villain in this book called Hemo Goblin. And he basically going around killing some heroes. The, the dude got AIDS. <laughs> That's his superpower. It says the post was about Hemo Goblin being the worst, most controversial villain. He's a white supremacist vampire whose power allows him to bite enemies and gives them AIDS. 
You don't necessarily need no power to get nobody AIDS from a bite, but I digress. I mean, as long as the virus trans is transferable through, um, at least I understood it was transferable through um, spit. I don't know, saliva. Uh, let's see, Paco Spring can highlight the villain in one of their videos. The former countless thousands of this dash the scoundrel. His attention led to a new all time high 152 for graded out, but copy. We tried 19 copies sold. Seven day trend 148%, high 23 raw copy current. Fair market value very fine, six dollars. I Man, speculation to make anything out of something worthwhile. And I've said this on the show plenty of times. Anyone that's in the chat with the comic book collection, at any point in time, your comics, but some of your comics can be keys like this. The New Guardians. I ain't never heard this lame duck group before, but hey, everybody has the time in the sun at some point. Number seven, Ultimate Spider-Man number one, Mark Chiquetto regular. I guess that's the eight cover. That's number seven. This book has been a 2024 All Star. We tracked 37 copies sold at a seven day trend of 98%. A high sale, $230 for 9.8 current raw fair market value in the mid 82. This book came out in January, y'all. Number six, Star Wars High Republic Adventures Phase 3. Number four, Harvey Tillobayo. Dark Horse. I guess this dude right here is probably going to be in a Star Wars movie or a game or a TV show. Nefarious Niv Drindal. If you're a Star Wars fan and key collector, this book's probably how on your want list. Book interest not one, but two staggering. Oh, eight new characters. Wow. Fair market value on this book has jumped over four times to go to price. Healthy aftermarket demand. Star Wars fans have been on to keep the book hot for weeks. We tracked 19 copies, seven day trend, 201% with a high sale of $18 for a raw copy. Fair market value, then we 12 books. All righty. Number five, 8 Billion Genies. Number one, Image. This book has been on and off uh, uh, charts and the list for the, a few months because I think they, they, um, this is actually going to be optioned into a movie, I think. Yep. Yep. Amazon looking to the property for a future production. News has been on existence since the initial announcement. All last week, all this changed. Speaking of Amazon, I'm tripping how they add an extra three dollars for ad free. Because I went to watch Invincible. I didn't know Invincible had dropped. The, the second half of the second season. Shout out to Larry Crocker for letting me know. When I went to look at it, a pop up came up saying, "We now put ads on our um, on our programming, but you can get it ad free for extra three dollars." Like, Man, y'all tripping. Anyway, they tracked twenty three copies sold of this particular book. The seven day trend, one sixty seven percent. I said one ten. CDC nine point eight. Near mint. Near mint. Fair market $32. New Muse number four. We all know why this is on the list. Of course, Deadpool movie is supposed to be dropping in July. This book is it, it is literally on a roller coaster. This book has its highs, has its lows, and then it just ebbs in the middle. And something else comes out and it jumps back up, goes back down. This is a, this is what you call a seesaw book. Let's see here. All it takes is a spark. Room and Wi-Fi begins. Latest comes from a comment from James Marson, aka Cyclops. That dude did his thing in the comment in the cartoon. I mean, in front. He subbed the comment that he filmed Sonic 3 next to the Deadpool 3 stages. Yeah, I think, man, I think Deadpool 3 gonna have this by everybody that's been in a, a Marvel mutant movie, any plus a few other people. So yeah, I and I won't be surprised that movie will be it's gonna be full of cameo, not just from Fox, but on the MCU side too. All right, Ultimate X-Men number one piece for Moko. So that's uh 
variant. These Pomoko's work is hit or miss. Some of her stuff looks good, and some of it's like, ah. Oh. So apparently she's supposed to be the, the artist on this book. And let's see here, Ultimate X-Men is a fresh take on the X-Men, drawing little influence from previous X-Men titles. From what I understand, she actually, is, she's writing and uh, doing the art, and she's supposed to be drawing inspiration from like Japanese folklore, which is cool, but I've never been a fan of the Ultimate Universe personally. That Ultimatum story when Magneto like just went crazy, that was cool. But in the Ultimate Hope versus Wolverine, that was really good. So we tried 42 copies sold at a seven day trend of 104% with a high sale of $20 for a raw copy and current near mint full market value, fair market value of $12. All right, Ultimate Spider-Man number two. Okay. First appearance of the new Ultimate Universe Shocker. 49 copies sold, 105%. High sales, $70, 9.8. Near mint full, near mint fair market value, $16. And number one, Ultimate Black Panther, number one. This book, I think it was, this, okay, so I think this book was kind of conflated. And the reason why I say that is because when it first dropped, again, I'm not really into the Ultimate Universe, so I wouldn't check it for it. But when it first dropped, of course, Penguin Publishing, lost a bunch of copies and all that kind of crap so anybody that didn't have it on their pull list it shot up right so basically they're doing a couple of i think they did like a stick i think it's already a third print the second print actually like is in the process of selling out or sold out or something like that but because that first print was so scarce I mean, that was on eBay and they were selling that for like crazy. Track 54 copies sold, seven day trend, high sale, $91 for a CTC. And the book just came out, Joe got it graded. 9.8 copy in the current raw, near mint, $27. All right. We don't never do this, but of course, this is the uh, top 10 runners up. So. All right, we're going to move on to CVSI right quick and we're going to cover things and then we're going to end the service after we pass around the benediction plate. All right, so CVSI. So noticeable sales or um, what you call it, runners up. Something that's killing the children, number six, James Tingen, it's one in 25. Uh, wow. $1,700 sale this week was notable enough for a modern book. Gee, gee. This is not near the all time high 2750 from back during the pandemic. There you go. Well above the seesaw price the last two years. And some of Matt, uh, Matt's goodness. Sun Girl number one, writer Stan Lee, cover artist Kim Ball. It's that golden age good girl cover that he likes. Six point five, three thousand dollars for this time. Oh, that's a Tommy book. Tommy was on point before Marvel. Marvel was Tommy comics. All right, so on to the top ten list. Number ten, Star Wars: High Republic Adventures. Number four. I've never heard. Well, never mind. I ain't. I don't even check for Star Wars like that. But ten, fifteen dollar cover. A still a big mover. Number nine, I Heart's Girl. I heart skull crusher number one. What's going on, man? Glad you could drop by. I'm running things solo dolo tonight. All right. I'm not sure what I heart skull crusher is. Back on the list this week because the price has actually risen from $10 to $20, averages $20 to $30. I don't know nothing about this book. Anybody in the chat know anything about I Heart Skull Crusher? Because I don't. Number eight, Uncanny X Men 168 Classic Cover, Chris Claremont, Paul Smith. Chris Claremont, by the way, is going to be at Heroes Con in North Carolina. And some of the comic called Crew is Going. I think some of the heroes after Dark Crew is Going. And I can't wait because Chris Claremont is that dude for me in the comic book world. So I got my three or four books I want to get him to sign. And I'm hoping. 
I'm praying to God that he uh, lets me give give him a brief interview. Uh, that would be wonderful if I can. Um, the Claremont comes through this third X-Men. Oh, wow. Third X-Men book on the list this week. Oh, wow. First Marilyn Pryor. Spoiler alert. You haven't seen X-Men 97. My one close years. I'm not going to say nothing. But first appearance of Malin Pryor and a huge uh, and a character that not only could be a big part of future X Men I seven episodes, Goblin Queen crossover in the Spidey Verse, jump from a three dollar book to as high as thirty dollars for all. Sweet. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> hey folks, let me tell y'all something. And I've said this on the show with the rest of the guys. Okay, so three dollar book, thirty dollars, twenty seven dollars differential, all because said character, spoiler alert, was in, was in the cartoon. I don't understand that, y'all. I I do not understand that. Like, wasn't nobody checking for Madeline Pryor beforehand? So why is it a big deal now? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just a cartoon. So, ultimately, I'm sure, yeah, everything going to go its course with the cartoon and stuff. So, is that book going to remain a $30 book just because she was in the cartoon? Speculation nowadays is just jacked up, in my honest opinion. Because I know when I bought this book, I probably spent less than three bucks for it. But... You know, bread is high as hell nowadays, so you know, you gotta, gotta make them ducats. Number seven, Throne Alliance, number three, uh, one in 25, Timothy's on. Now, I've read some of the, uh, the novels. And if you're in, if, if you're in Star Wars and never read the novels, Truce of Baccarat, uh, it's one with Dash Rendar, Shadow of the Republic, Shadow of something. I got a few of them of the novels and it's been so long since I read them but Timothy's on if you come across any of the books with him writing he's an excellent writer and he he, he understood the Star Wars universe and it's a shame that um, Kathleen Kennedy didn't use any of that resource that he that she had for them instead of making Ray Skywalker like the one above all I digress alright so number 6 well was Spider-Man 1 1 in 25 Oh, uh, basically the Spider-Man preview book. What? Eight dollar cover price on the regular edition gets you a couple of page sneak peeks at the upcoming storylines and all the Spider-Man characters. Raising Spider-Man, the Spider Woman, the Chasm, the Kane, Scarlet Spider. Speaking of which, that man with that movie, I heard it was terrible. Anybody in the chat seen it? If you have, please uh just put a the five word response in regards to that particular movie. Five Strange two oh five. Uh, oh, okay. So this is a DC. Oh, it was DC because it's on um, Dead Man. Look what James Gunn can do with an IG post in no context. Simple picture of Dead Man gets posted. People rush out to get the classic first. There we go. So I read a pricey run, but it has to stop collectors from chilling out. An all time high 3000 for CGC 9.0 this week. Who knows if anything will come out of IG Post, but James Gunn is making comics fun. We did a show about maybe a year or two ago, and we talked about how DC Comics weren't getting any love in terms of speculation. This was right around the time I think WandaVision had came out. And it's in our video list, and you could probably just type in DC Comics. But we did two shows. We did one show, and that one show was about overvalued Marvel books. The other one was about undervalued DC books. My prediction was that if James Gunn, well, I predicted that at some point something was going to happen to cause DC books to increase. What's up, Barbarian? It's just me by myself tonight, baby, but thank you for joining. I appreciate it. But I have surmised and predicted that at some point the table's I don't think they're going to turn, but we're going to start seeing a lot more of this. And if James Gunn is successful in turning the DC um, universe, cinematic universe around, 
he could breathe and, and, and he can cough and say something like Firestorm and number one of Firestorm the Nuclear Man would be a $800 book. One of my favorite DC characters, by the way. And I already got it, so I ain't worried about all that, if that happens. Number four, uh, Star Wars Vision Sakachi, one in 100. Everyone's favorite storyline from Star Wars Visions returned. One shot by the master Ta Ta Takashi Ozaka Okazaki. Virgin variant, one in 100 incentive, has fans. May have been only a few copies sold this week. Average $150, a high of 190 um number three nova we saw that on the cbsi of course you know all that talk with marvel and again i'm glad i bought that other copy i actually finished that run um last october shout out to the florida crew hylia and stone cold uh, jeff puff all them um i finished that run volume one run of nova last year one of 24 issues though so. uh number two uh, X-Men 221 I mentioned earlier in the chat I mean, in the live stream excuse me this book undervalued along with X-Factor 6 first appearance of Sinister I got like three copies of this book now we know that Sinister this ain't no spoiler but Sinister is basically the big bad of X-Men 97 they've already said that he was you can actually see the opening and tell you know more of his you can look at him in his eyes and stuff and sinister was there so even though x-men 97 is here sinister's not yet appeared on the show show may not be the only reason folks are looking at his first appearance he's rumored for a live action at the big bang yeah there's a rumor floating around that that they're not going to actually go with magneto and the mcu is supposed to be sinister which is interesting i mean because sinister has a storyline that actually he meets up with a lot of people. I mean, and this is the crazy synergy about that. If Sinister is in fact the main villain that they'll use in the MCU, number one, I hope he ain't a one-shot villain. Number two, we'll probably see him tied up with Apocalypse because he got his powers mainly from Apocalypse. So that would be an interesting development. And of course, Uncanny X-Men number 200, that's the trial of Magneto. I actually saw somebody in a comics explain chat talk about how you know, where did Magneto get this that costume from? And it's like, dude, you have never read an X-Men comic book in your life. But this was a pretty good book, and they drew a lot of inspiration from the second episode of the X-Men book. Um, I mean the, the the cartoon from this. So how does it end up being important this week? Of course, the costume, which is stupid, why this is on this on the um on the list. Uh, fantastic opening two episodes. Episode two, episode two covers the very issue in part. Magneto is wearing this big in outfit in the series. He renewed interest in this book that was only a few books to start fetching a $15, $20 brawl with over 60 sales this week. Even 9.8s bounced up to $160 when you can get a 9.8 for as little as $60 at the end of February. Well, I don't understand, y'all. And y'all have to help me out with this. Why didn't you have the book already? Why is it that you see him in a cartoon and all of a sudden you gotta have his his, his book? I like, I don't get that. What are you gonna do with the book? Like honestly, you I mean, what are you gonna? Oh, this this was the costume Magneto was wearing in episode two or X Men ninety seven. Like, is that all you got the book for? Now I can see if you was a fan of Magneto and didn't have the book before, I get that. But I mean, if, even if you were a fan of Magneto like that, I'm sure Larry Crocker, Magneto, one of his biggest, one of his favorite characters in the X-Men universe. And I'm sure he had this book or he has this book and he don't even collect the volume one run of X-Men. So again, why is this book on the list? But anyway, folks, this is the Hot 10 for CBSI. Thank you for joining. Let's see. Gotta get that so much fun for a sinister. Man, I'm gonna tell you something, Barbarian. If Chad, if you could, the real talk, man, if you could probably go to a few comic book stores, and if they haven't caught on to the X-Men 97, this book is grossly underrated. 
Yeah. And see, that's the thing, Dan, and thank you for joining, man. Like, people don't understand when you see this kind of stuff, in my opinion, it, it, it devalues the book in terms of what the book is actually worth. That whole, I mean, that whole art, when Magneto was actually trying to redeem himself, he became the headmaster of the school. He took the new mutants under his wing. You know, I read comics. He took the new mutants under his wing. They fucked up against him. It was basically the whole episode two almost of what happened in X-Men 97. I mean, but that's that's overlooked because he got the purple suit. <laughs> he got the Barney the dinosaur suit on, on the cover. And it's like, dude, y'all don't understand. This was a turning point in Magneto from X-Men 1 up to X-Men 200. Magneto was a bona fide villain. He was that thorn in the X-Men side that they could never get rid of him before the issue episode. Issue 200, he started making his face turn. Props to wrestling. He started making his face turn. And then 200 was actually when Chris Clemmer said, we're going to give this dude a, a clean slate. Professor X is out the way. Bam, we're there. And from that point, that's when he had his redemption arc. Like I said, the headmaster of the, the, the school for the gifted. He was a consul to the X-Men. Matter of fact, this was around the time. Uh, what's going on, comic book champ? How you doing, man? This was around the time that um I just lost my train of thought. Dang it, dang it, Dale. But this was around the time where he was basically in a position where he was trying to make amends for everything that he'd done. He finally realized that, you know, Charles might be right. So I'm going to go ahead and take his side. And, um, you know, I think up until the X-Men Jim Lee run is when he actually went back. Well, actually, Fatal Attractions, when he messed up Wolverine with the, the worst of worstness. Um, but anyway, yeah, that, these books are on this list, unfortunately, for the wrong reason. And it's not for the purpose of the story because the story itself is it's an awesome story if y'all have never read it y'all can't find the, ep the it golly, episode y'all can't find the issues try to find it in like a um uh uh graphic novel format because it's a really good story because it actually runs into uncanny new mutants and i want to say part of it runs into x factor too i could be wrong x factor all right, folks. So we are done with that. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for rolling with me by myself. So we got two two news stories that I want to actually talk about really quick, and then we're gonna get into the main event. So without further ado, One of the dumbest things that I have seen on the internet over the past week, y'all. Donnie, what's up, bro? Good to see you, my man. Good to see you, my man. If I'm not mistaken, you're going to the Heroes Con this year, aren't you? If so, we'll be able to do the fusion dance like Vegeta. Vegeta. Anyway, this is one of the dumbest things that I have seen, folks. Do comic book ads count as first appearances of characters? Why, oh, why? That's what's up. We shall meet, man. We will form my gold shroud. Defender of Earth. But yeah, man. <coughs> this is crazy, y'all. This is one of these things that I talk about all the time. For one, the comic book community and the powers that be need to determine once and for all whether it be a, a pit fight, a death cage match, whether it be a barbed wire match like Dusty Rose and Rick Flair used to have, Rip the Dusty Rose, whether it be a game of rock, paper, scissors, they need to figure out what constitutes a first appearance and what constitutes a cameo. Because if you're doing, if you're running articles on do comic book ads count as first appearances of characters, you have something nefarious up your sleeve. You demanded it from the wilderness regions of Canada 
comes the dreaded Wolverine, but is he here or the most dangerous super villain ever? Okay, so apparently it says there's no official definition of a character's first appearance in comics. I thought it was. See how this stuff is starting to change, man? The distinction between cameo and first appearance in comics is often subjective and based on collective preferences. I was under the imp uh, impression that a cameo, y'all can drag me if I'm wrong, cameo was like a, a panel of, of a last page. That character is like either shrouded in darkness or the partial appearance of the character or maybe even a, a picture of the character on the, final, on the last page of the book or the final panel. That's what I thought. And the first appearance was the actual first full appearance that the individual appeared in the story. That has always been my understanding of a cameo and a first appearance. So apparently, I don't know what I'm talking about. And apparently, none of us know what they're talking about because it's saying that there is no the distinction between cameo and first appearance in comics is often subjective. How is it subjective? I don't get that. Then it says house ads and comments may not always count as first appearances, but collectors will sometimes pay, will still pay big money for them. And my answer is why. I mean, if you got the money, it's your money. You can do what you want to do with your money. But at the end of the day, if you're looking at this as the first appearance of a character, and I mean, what's not on the tape? You know? So it, the ad goes on to say, you know, those ads, you sometimes see 10 things they don't want you to know about dish soap or whatever. Well, if you've been reading my comments long enough, you'll know they don't want you to know. It's basically 100% of the rules. I don't know what this is saying. Brings up the question of the day. After you read my recent post about date stamps on comic book covers to comic book ads for characters debut that predate the character's debut count as the actual first appearance. I mean, what do y'all think? I don't think so. That's just me. Because if we start seeing the ads now take precedence of the actual character being in a comic book, then we talking about brand new territory. And if I'm not mistaken, they attempted to do that with a it was a Marvel. It was a Marvel. Uh, one of those those. Um, Oh my God! You know those books that come out that actually has like the the solicitations for for uh, comics. They had they it was a big deal about Miles Morales because Miles Morales was in one of those. I'll be looking for excuses to turn books into keys. That's exactly what it is, Dan, and it makes no sense. It was previews. Thank you. The term key got twisted by certain apps and popular. <laughs> A comic fam, I uh, okay. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna even go that route tonight. Um, I'm by myself, so somebody might come in the chat and start bullying me like the gooch. Shout out the different strokes, but yeah, it's previews. So, it was the issue of some time ago, as a matter of fact, comic book champ, I saw that if I'm not mistaken, my memory served me correctly, that was on that show where they were talking about how that. The, the appearance of Miles Morales in the previews book predated Ultimate Fallout 4 and that book was actually selling. It was like people were buying that book and it was like really like y'all are just, just reaching and grasping for straws like this makes no sense you know but um, I mean it is what it is man. I'm going to stick to what I know as far as what's a key and what's not a key and I'm going to that from there you know but yeah it was a marvel previews book but you know this is the thing that gambit's first appearance is clearly uncanny x-men annual 14. this i will not argue with because this book actually came out before uncanny x-men 266 as far as but but the, the same argument can be said with i think amazing spider-man 252 and marvel secret wars number eight so Marvel Secret Wars number eight is, was the legitimate first appearance of the Black Symbiote suit, but 252 actually predated that, I think, by a couple of weeks or something like that. I mean, it is what it is. 
But if you're going to make it concrete, make it concrete across the board and don't try to change it every time somebody has the notion of, of, of trying to sell a, a pawn off some books, because it makes no sense to me. But um, this is there's no doubt about it. People try to turn me cameo just being silly and heck. In recent years, the official collectors guys have slowly but surely come around and men and uncanny X Men Angle 14 is Gambit's first appearance. I always thought that because that, like I said, that book I collected the X Men at the time. Gambit basically is in a few, he's in a, a, a few panels in that book, plus he has dialogue, so you can't really say it's a cameo, you just lying to yourself, you know. Let's see. No, it wasn't Donnie. But the problem that we have, as opposed to 10, 15 years ago, we didn't have all this hype with comic book movies, and we didn't have all this hype with the quote-unquote content creators on YouTube and other sources like Instagram and TikTok trying to um, shield books. That way they could actually get rid of stuff. So I think that's going to be the biggest difference, man. When you got people like, for example... I always bring this book up that uh, West Coast Avengers, the first appearance of White Vision, that should have never been the, uh, the that book should have never actually apexed the way the way it did. I remember me and Matt were um, headed to a comic book store in Lawrenceville, I think it's Lawrenceville, probably about an hour and twenty minutes. Shout out to Dave's Comics, we talk about them all the time. And I was on my phone, and and there was a somebody sent me a picture of a of uh the avengers uh west coast avengers with you know first white vision at 9.8 sold for like twenty eight hundred dollars now we ain't seen white vision since he flew off at the end of wandavision and we don't even know when he's gonna be back in the mcu but i mean you know the people were hyping that book up and you know they find a sucker to pay <laughs> $2,800 for a 9.8 of that book. I mean, I collect, I've collect. collected that series. I got the full run of that series and that book I paid three bucks for, you know. But the way it's going now, we have a situation where any and everything could be considered. And the only reason why they're saying this kind of stuff is because if, if you get enough people to, to say that this right here, I don't know what book this showed up in, but if this right here is the actual first appearance of Wolverine, then whatever they have in terms of their inventory, they can start peddling and they can start pushing off and they can start touting. This is the first official, this is the first appearance in quotation marks of Wolverine. And at that point, what, what would have been a five, six, seven dollar book is now turned into a 50, 200, 300 dollar book. You know, yeah, he said he was going to be back, but we don't know, Chris. I mean, that still didn't warrant that book to, to, to jump up the way it did. I mean, I, I, I felt sorry for people that were buying that book because people were literally getting fleeced, you know, and I think that's a caveat for people as far as new comic book collectors that get into the game and, you know, people because a lot of people started collecting comics when the MCU really took off. And a lot of sellers, as much as it, 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 it sounds very crass, a lot of sellers, man, they were out there just abusing their privileges, getting over on people. I mean, they were getting over on people. But, I mean, it, it's a two-way street. You, 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 you know, it's give and take, you know. And it's funny you say that, Dan. Shout out to Rico. Uh, he said the same thing. Two plus two is five. If you get enough people to believe it, that's correct. That's how the comic book I have it works now. And, and I tell people, man, that's like getting into the comic in you know, comic industry, comic book collecting. We talk all the time. You know, man has this thing like if you if you just literally want to spend a certain amount of money on comic books, just email us at comic comic hall roundtable discussion at gmail.com and we'll give you a list of books that you can buy that will be worth your while instead of just going out here and buying these books because of a character showed up. Y'all imagine the number of books were sold on Madam Well's first appearance in that movie was like grade A pig slop, from what I understand. Now you sitting on a a, a paper a, a paperweight that is lighter than the paper you trying to hold down. It's ridiculous. But yeah, when you have this kind of stuff going on and it's like what's next? 
that's that's the what that's what i see i would have never thought that people would actually bring this to the forefront and this wasn't the only article this was just like the top article in this particular topic but i'm sure at some point in time like i said they're more of a previews with miles it caught on fire for for a minute so who's to say we won't see it again but it is what it is so but anyway that's it for that now one thing i want to do i'm gonna go a couple quick things and thank you so much for everybody in the chat i really appreciate it y'all making me feel so comfortable man i feel like i'm on like like satellite radio man like you know it's 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 it's, it's you know i wish the homies were here but it's like i'm, I'm good you know I'm, i've been talking for like an hour and stuff i hope my, my voice ain't great and i'm like oh my god he has a very terrible voice anyway all right so there's one other thing that I want to actually show, but I want to actually try to see if I can get some dialogue going uh, with something. Um, let's see. And, and I can go over this stuff really quick. So I'm going to just run the ticker for a couple of these. And then I'm going to go back to a story that I want everybody to see. But this actually happened about a month ago. Um, it's supposed to be. What happened is supposed to be scrolling, it's not scrolling. Okay, Disney strikes deal for Sony to take over his DVD Blu-ray this business. Now, myself and um one of my homies, Larry, he you know shows up every now and then like Bigfoot. Um, <clears throat> we talk about this all the time. And we talk, and at, I guess one point at, at some point we're gonna do a show about it, you know, digital to physical uh media. And I've noticed, and a couple other people have noticed as well, that, you know, with the whole digital slash uh, physical media, there's been a lot of talk lately where people have started to go back to physical media. I never left. Um, I buy used DVDs, well, Blu-rays, DVDs if I can't find on Blu-ray, but I, I, buy, I buy used Blu-rays like, you know a thirsty man buying water in the desert like anytime i could pick up especially movies that i really want or haven't had the opportunity to pick up i get them and i don't know if i'm putting myself on front street but i'm gonna go ahead and share it with y'all if you are into selling or buying excuse me if you're into buying the uh physical media like blu-rays and stuff one of the best places even though you see some jacked up prices on comics and video games one of the best places to buy uh, cheap Blu-rays is eBay. Pre-owned Blu-rays, eBay. I've actually bought seven Blu-ray movies for like 30 bucks. Free shipping. You got your Goodwills out there. You got your other places where they get this stuff in bulk, put it out there, and it's in good shape. You know, for the, the insert, sometimes the digital code might be in there. You know, um, sometimes it's not. But if you're looking to actually beef up your collection of Blu-rays and you don't mind it being pre-owned, I'm talking about Marvel movies, DC movies, cartoons, everything. eBay is the place to go. So I've been beefing up my uh, Blu-ray collection, just picking up stuff that I haven't had in my collection before. Uh, but basically, you know, you're looking at a situation where a lot of the uh, streaming services are taking over. And a lot of people are getting upset over the fact the streaming services are starting to pull this nickel and dime thing on you. Um, a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, you know, Amazon Prime or Amazon Movies, you know, they try to hit me with the flim flam talking about ass now. But one of the biggest things, the, the biggest seller for streaming services was the fact that there were no ads. You know, Hold on a second here. I turn on eBay for the one volume. Dude, the Venture Brothers, man, is one of the best Adult Swim shows that they came out with, man. That 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 show was brilliant. You know, just their take of the whole Johnny Quest, Hanna Barbera thing, man. Like, I bro, we when when we see each other at Heroes Con, man, we're gonna have to talk about OSI and all them, man. Venture Brothers. If y'all never seen Venture Brothers, bro, check it out. It was one of the best 
That's when Adult Swim was good. One of the best shows on Adult Swim, bar none, was um, The Venture Brothers. I got to find it. But yeah, eBay is going to be a good spot for you to go. But yeah, when it comes down to it, um, you know, these streaming services are starting to trip. And you're like in a position like, okay, well, you know, um, I, the convenience used to be there, but, you know, you keep raising the prices. Netflix has gone up. Um, Disney Plus has gone up. Hulu, Paramount. And then for the sheer number of streaming services out there, you get six or seven streaming services under your belt. It's about like paying for a mid-tier cable package almost, you know? And then you got to deal with um, ads and commercials and stuff. So now, you know, what are you going to do? So I actually just started buying because I think at the end of the day, another one of my predictions, it's only going to get worse with streaming services. We're probably going to see a, a day not not so immediate future where a lot of these streaming services are going to be 24 25 dollars a month with ads you know and 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 you're going to be like well is it really worth it to have four or five streaming services at 20 dollars a pop i think i don't have netflix but i think netflix is right at 20 dollars for like the base plan somebody correct me if i'm wrong but I mean that's that's a lot. I mean, considering a lot of these streaming services started off at five, six bucks. I understand inflation. I understand yeah, all that kind of stuff. People's wages aren't actually meeting the 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 need for this increase, you know. Just being honest, you know, but it's it, we'll see. I, I I guess we'll see at some point. But um one other thing too that i wanted to talk to the the panel is um the walking dead spinoffs i've noticed that there's a lot of walking dead spinoffs now um since they've actually ended the show i kind of fell off on the show back when they went to alexandria and negan um filleted that dude he gutted him out there in front of the pool table i can't think his name was spencer i kind of stopped watching then but i heard it actually got better towards the end but anybody in the chat watching The Walking Dead, as I know they just dropped a Michonne and, and Rick show. And um Negan and, and Maggie and Daryl Dixon, of course, they got fear of the walking dead. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just curious because I've never really I'm I've not heard anybody watching the walking dead so uh let's see dan says i thought i was watching regular tv again when i saw Astro x97 fortunately i have um my disney plus is through verizon and i pay enough for that crap uh for the phone service but fortunately my disney plus is ad free knock on wood so i didn't i don't get the um the ads and stuff but yeah it's it's unfortunate man when the streaming services tell you you gotta you gotta pay for ads and stuff ad free stuff man it's just that was one of the biggest lures to having a streaming service that you didn't have to worry about looking at uh ambassol commercials and preparation h commercials because you didn't have to worry you just wanted to watch the show and you could watch the show to see i don't mind that as long as they aren't overbearing i watch a lot of tubi for that will eventually be a pay service yeah it's gonna be man tubi is has garnered the attention and eyes of a lot of people man and and, and you know unfortunately that saying all good things must come to an end it actually holds true for a lot of stuff i've watched tubi back in the day but i haven't watched it recently i heard they were actually the hub of like really bad like uh <laughs> made for tv movies <laughs> I see some memes on, on the internet about it. Christopher Jackson, thank you for joining us, sir. Goodwill and Flea Market, perfect honey. Yep. DVD, DVD and Blu-ray. Used to be a perfect um hunting ground for, for retro games, too, man. They started getting crazy with it. But um, you know, it is what it is. So all right. So apparently no one's watching the walking dead. So we're gonna go over a couple quick things really quick. All right, so Falcon and Winter Soldier season two next. Anthony Mackie reported that and that show's not coming back. I actually like that first season. Um, you know, uh, I thought it was one of the better uh, Disney Plus shows at the time. 
Uh, and then he also indicated that Bucky Barnes wasn't going to be in the new Captain America movie, which I kind of figured because uh, Sebastian Shaw is in the Thunderbolts movie. So um, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire opened this weekend and it uh, actually opened number one, but it was actually from what I read, the box office for the weekend was less than the first one that actually dropped. So um, I heard the first one's pretty good. I've never seen it. Um, I'm, I'm sure Matt has probably watched it because he's a huge Ghostbuster fan. Uh, Beetlejuice number two trailer that dropped. <laughs> Michael King looked like he was like, dude, man, I don't want to do this. And I guess that maybe his whole shtick in the trailer you know um the trailer's pretty cool it's cool to see a, an old age property come back but i always say this hollywood is creatively bankrupt season one was good yeah yeah season one was really good of falcon and the winter soldier man like i said it was one of the better um shows at that point um to me you know uh, let's see here. I mentioned it earlier, but shouts out to Godzilla. Uh, minus one huge Godzilla fan, y'all. So it did me good to see that Godzilla actually won an Oscar for VFX, which actually opens up a lot of dialogue in terms of, um, you know, VFX. Uh, from what I understand, um, the director of the VFX, uh, you know, I can't say that man's name, but at one point it was rumored that they they did the, the budget for the vfx for that movie was 15 million he got on x slash twitter and said he wish he got that much so i think it was it was 30 million it might have been 30 or 15 million but whatever number it was he said it was less than what he actually used to do the vfx and i don't know if anyone in the chat has actually seen that movie but I mean, yeah, I'm going to be biased towards Godzilla because I've been a long time fan since I was knee high to a B. But that movie was phenomenal. And honestly, I felt like it should have actually had more to it than just the VFX. The acting was superb. The cast was awesome. Cinematography was great. But of course, it's a foreign film, so it's not going to rack up at the Oscars, you know, so... It is what it is, but it was a really good movie. They dropped the release date for it. I think it's supposed to drop later on this year. Um, Godzilla vs. Kong comes out next week. I'm excited to see it, but I don't know, man. I think they westernized Godzilla and King Kong, man. So I don't know. We'll see. I've uh, I've liked all the MonsterVerse movies up to this point. So I guess we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. I'm kind of disappointed that they're not actually focusing on a lot of the monsters from the Toho verse, like Megalon, um, Ibera, um, Biolante. Hopefully, if they continue the um, the franchise, they'll start drawing into those particular monsters for any subsequent or future installments. Now, that show, if you have Apple TV, there's a show called Monarchs that came out, which was like a side story to fall in line with the whole MonsterVerse, you know, timeline or because, you know, it's 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 its own universe. It's really, excuse me, it's really good. It is really good. So um, check that out if you have Apple TV, if you if you don't, don't worry about it. Um, and Batman 2020, uh, Batman 2 uh, with the glistening vampire dude. I can never remember his name um that got pushed to 2026 i think i said i got 2025 on here we got pushed to 2026 they haven't really said why um but the twilight dude i cannot never remember his name but yeah they um they pushed it back for some reason from what i understand it doesn't affect the james gunn universe because i think it's this whole whole separate universe unto itself but yeah it's kind of odd that it got pushed back that far uh, let's see what you got to say, Christopher. Have you seen the new Marvel 14? Yeah, man. I saw it. Um, shout out to Game Ranks. Gamer Ranks. I follow them, subscribe to them on YouTube. They actually had a little thing um, they dropped yesterday about it. Um, man, the game looks good. It's supposed to be in the Unreal 5 engine. And But the crazy part, I'm going to tell you what trip me out, though. T'Challa, or T'Chaka, rather. Uh, they used Carrie Payton, the guy that um, played Ezekiel in Walking Dead. 
and uh, he voices Cyborg and Teen Titans. They they use his likeness as the model for T'Chaka. I'm like, man, that dude don't look African. But I mean, he's a great voice actor. I'm I'm, I'm not going to even front. So maybe he could pull it off in terms of visage and stuff. So, all right. So let's see. All right. I want two more things, and then I'm gonna get to the halls really quick. So, Akira Toriyama. I had a little um, um, tribute to him earlier in the show, at the beginning of the show, as a matter of fact. Um, this guy. And I said it on an IG post. Akira Toriyama was to uh, anime and manga as to what um, um, Stanley and Jack Kirby was to comic books. I don't know of any one person in my circle that did not. G Man, what's going on, sir? By the way, if y'all don't know G-Man, G-Man, I don't know, you need to correct me if I'm wrong because I saw it in the chat glancing, getting ready for the um, the show. But G-Man and the wife are expected. So if that's true, you can confirm it. I meant to say congratulations in the chat, but I didn't because I was working on this. So if that's the case, man, congratulations, man. You know, that is what's up. That is what's up. But um, but yeah, um, Akira Toriyama was that he was that dude. You know, he he's considered by many to be the grandfather of modern anime. And you know, whether you like it or hate it, he has he has basically no problem, man, no problem at all. He basically shaped a lot of lives. He was very influence influential in a lot of people's lives and. I don't know how many people in the chat was actually, you know, fans of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, but I ain't gonna lie. I was a huge fan. I, I didn't catch Dragon Ball Z until, I mean, Dragon Ball until after Dragon Ball Z. But uh, the way I was actually, love you too, sir. Keep on keeping on. But um, with the way, you know, when I first got acclimated with Akira Toriyama, I was watching bootleg Japanese tapes from Japan and they weren't even subtitled so you know they hollering all the Kamehameha and all that crap and I'm like dude what are they saying but you know they started uh, bringing the dubs over here to, to America and there's this place called uh, Media Play and they were a retail you know entertainment store they sold movies y'all might be familiar with it but every Tuesday when they started dropping uh, when they started dropping, um, you know, tapes, uh, VHS tapes, because I'm old, bro. I was there every Tuesday, you know, Dragon, Dragon, Rock the Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. And every, you know, the tapes came out sporadically. I want to say it came out maybe once a month or once every two weeks or something, whenever they dubbed it. Because the VHS tape, they didn't have the Japanese, because, you know, that would be very cumbersome to have. <laughs> The Japanese sub and then the, the English version on the same tape. So it was the English version. So me and my brothers and my niece at the time, she was really young. We would sit down, man, and crack open one of those tapes. And we would sit there and do three to four episodes at a time. And we would just be immersed in Japanese culture. And like I said beforehand, I was, you know, familiar with, you know, anime because I grew up watching Gotcha Man slash Battle of the Planets and speed racer and spaceship um uh, battleship yamamoto is called all-star blazers over here but yeah i mean it was just one of them things where he just opened my eyes up to a whole new genre and a whole new art form so you know when he passed away that kind of like really hit me in the gut real hard because he's one of those cats like i said like uh chad with bozeman you know i never met the guy a day in my life but he was just an influential guy and he was one of those kind of people like Chad with Bozeman where if I knew Japanese I would sit down and just pick his brain you know how'd you come up with the idea I already know but he was just that dude and, and I appreciate it I appreciate his contributions because you know this dude was really he was talented and he did his thing yeah yeah Speed Racer man Speed Racer used to come on I live in Georgia and Speed Racer used to come on and um it's not it's it's WTBS now, but it used to be called WTCG back in the day. Because you know I'm I'm old, I'm 52. So um, 
back in the day, it came on Saturday morning, like early Saturday. And um, it came on with Space Giants. I don't know if y'all know that it is called Ambassador Magma over in Japan. Uh, Ultraman, that came, all that came on at the same time. So they basically stole a lot of Japanese programming and aired it over here in America. But um, yeah, that stuff, man, it stuck with me to this very day, man. I read anime and manga. And, I mean, I'll read manga and watch anime to this very day and stuff. Matter of fact, you know, my skull cap is in part of Straw Hat Crew. And I'm a capital capsule corp temporary employee. So um yeah, Kira Toriyama was that dude. I mean, you know, he was and he touched a lot of people in terms of his art. And um I really appreciate it. So when he passed away, it was kind of like one of those things. It's like, uh yeah, that hit me in the gullet. So, but um, it's all good. He still has a legacy. And see here, we had TBS here too. Man, Braves. That's when I used to be a huge Braves fan, man. Not so much now. You know, Bob Horner and Dale Murphy and all them cats and um Caldwell Washington. Yeah, I was man, we watched. Yeah, man. I think it's one of the only channels we had aside from like basic channels, local channels and stuff. So but yeah, he was the he was that dude, man. So Last thing on the docket, and I'm going to get to my hauls, is X-Men 97. Let me tell y'all something. I'm going to try to make this brief. Let me sip my V8. Again, they're not a sponsor, but V8 juice. is This is deliciously green, and it is delicious. I don't think I can get a copyright strike for this. It's some, some delicious juice, y'all. And it tastes really good cold. But anyway, X-Men 97 exceeded my expectations. It it um it wowed me. Um one thing, and I didn't sip my juice, I'm sorry. The throat was kind of parched. Since I'm here talking about my lonesome. But X Men '97 was the bee's knee. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I had. I had. I'm not gonna lie. I was very apprehensive about it. I didn't know what to expect. And you know, I'm not caught up in that mindset that a lot of people are when it comes down to Marvel projects and the, you know, this, that, and the third being said. I take things for face value. I got common sense. I know how to separate the wheat from the chaff, according, you know, biblical reference. But I could take this and that, use my common sense and just, you know, move forward. <coughs> Excuse me. X-Men 97, it, it it blew me away. I've watched it several times between Wednesday and today and probably going to watch a few uh, for a few more times. Well, at least again tonight when after I uh, end the broadcast. I'm number one. It took it took off right, and I'm not gonna try to give any um, spoilers for those that haven't seen it. Try not to. Uh, if I do, I'm just gonna holler spoilers. But it left off right where the the, the, the last series ended, um, and it didn't miss a beat. And as a matter of fact, it improved tremendously on a few characters, which I'm happy to see because I see that this particular show is 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 focused not saying that the previous incarnation wasn't but this show is based it is it, it's, it's character driven and it's character development driven heavy if that makes sense um larry crocker he's not here but he's a huge cyclops fan and over the years we've always had this thing about cyclops and stuff I ain't gonna lie i'm gonna be honest with you cyclops I couldn't stand Cyclops because, you know, Wolverine, the Boy Scout thing, that was me. Like, I'm so sick of Cyclops, tired of Cyclops. Somebody need to be the leader other than him. Over the years, he's grown on me, storyline-wise, you know, X-Men, you know, him taking over, them moving to San Francisco, and then, you know, him getting the Phoenix Force, which was kind of, eh. But, you know, him killing Professor X, going to jail for it, all that kind of stuff. Cyclops was right. That's you know, you see those memes and stuff. 
this cartoon had Cyclops looking like Captain America with optic blasts. That first episode when he actually the first thing you know when he showed up and I said I'm not gonna give any spoilers out. But when he actually came on the scene, he saved old boy. I was like, I ran that back a couple of times. I'm like, what? Because, you know, in the old series, all he did was this right here, just shoot beams and stuff. But he was moving his body with his his optic blast and stuff. I'm like, whoa, I ain't even seen this in the comic book, man. This is amazing. And then, you know, of course, Storm and stuff. And I love Storm's voice actor. And I'm glad they were able to bring her back. And fun fact, a lot of people don't know this. The guy that originally voiced Cyclops died a few years back. So the guy that's actually voicing him now, he, it's not, of course, not the same dude. He almost sounds spot on. So there's a labor of love I can tell with that cartoon that somebody said, we're going to bring this back and we're not going to half-ass it. And if there's 10 episodes in this first season, and I hope I'm not... I'm not hope I'm not eating crow, but if the series can be based on the two episodes that they gave us, man, we have got a treat. We have really got a treat because those two episodes laid the groundwork for so many different story arcs that they can go with, you know. And it was crazy with some of the Easter eggs in the in the that I picked up. Now, I saw a video on YouTube where they said it was like 75 Easter eggs between the two episodes. Dang, like, that's a lot. But they did a lot in that short period of time in those two episodes. And they laid the groundwork for a lot of stuff. You know, one thing that I was glad to see was Wolverine, Cal Dodd, the guy that played Wolverine, or voiced Wolverine back in the day. When they were showing the trailers back before the you know the the show came on, that didn't sound like Wolverine. He sounds old. And then the first time when he opened his mouth, like when he was you know doing the thing with the claws and stuff, I said, "You shut up!" A whole bunch of idiots on the, the internet, man. I'm telling you, the 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 whole thing. Now, what if it's hit or miss? The first season was okay second season uh, and but some of the episodes in the first season were hit or miss too x-men was straight up legit like i feel like it was one of those things that they hit the mark hard um it pleases me to hear everyone speaking so hard about x-men haven't seen it yet because that makes certain choices bro you gotta do what you gotta do donnie but i'm telling you man when you watch it i don't take stock in in um in um Ron Tomatoes, Ron Tomatoes, they whatever, hundred percent, and and rightfully so. Uh, animation took me a big a bit of getting used to because it's different, of course, than the, the first series. A lot of folks don't know the fifth season of the X Men. They actually cut the budget seriously, so they were working on shoestring budget. But Larry was kind of like um, it kind of the animation kind of reminded him of Archer, the show that was on FX. It did, but it took some good use, but it was there. Um, plot twist in the first two episodes, especially the seven, second episode, it just set the tone. Um, so aside from Donnie, if anybody else uh, hasn't watched it, it is, yeah, they did their right. And Dan, let me tell you something, man. They went and they actually pulled stuff from all different, the story arts, you know, Trial of Magneto, they pull stuff from the Savage. If you're familiar with the Savage Land with Rogue and, you know, after the Siege Perilous with Rogue and, and uh, Magneto being stuck in the Savage Land, they were pulling stuff from everywhere. Even the, um, this thing, it's a sport of ain't a sport. The Executioner, don't nobody know who the Executioner is. That was actually, he was actually in a, uh, I think he was Uncanny X-Men Annual 17. It was his first appearance in the cover Storms on the cover, and of course Colossus. The Colossus didn't show up. You know he did show up, but but yeah, they they really did their homework. Um, they really did. Uh, so I was wondering, what's up, Iconic Man? Good to see you, dude. I was wondering why the Mayo X Men was fired. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I, you know, and I say this, Iconic. 
dude, you you have in in my eyes, you have a a a, a dream job. You get right that show. I mean, if he was responsible for the first two episodes and they got rid of him, I don't know if he. I mean, I don't know if he was the writer or the director. But dude, you're on a show that has been highly lauded and praised by everybody, even folks that was dissing the show before it came out have come back to eat crow and said this wasn't what I expected. And I think that's what a lot of people were thinking. But I, he had to have done something, man. When I found out he had an OnlyFans account, like man, come on, dude, you should have went super private on that thing and just just hit it for a while, you know. Um, let's see. Bro, hey man, let me tell you something. That next episode, man, with the way the second episode, I don't want to keep saying issue with the way that second episode ended, bro. I wasn't expecting that. And uh, man, I'm an avid reader X Men, but boy, I was oh dog, I said, that that ain't such and such. I'm like, oh, and man, it's like okay, somebody has really done their homework. They have really studied and they've sat down and read a ton of books <laughs> they read a ton of books a ton of books because they were pulling stuff out the comic book left and right you know uh let's see let's say man they shoot on multiple arcs in that second episode yep inferno bro yeah with 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 with, with uh forge i told uh larry i said man storm gonna end up hooking up with forge i i, I feel it in my bones when she got on that bus <laughs> <laughs> I said Forge is about to show up. Forge was in the first one. Um, he was in the first one. Uh, but I mean he was with X Factor. They didn't have no romantic involvement, but yeah. But yeah, um let's see iconic season two. Yeah, but you know, this is a crazy thing. Some some dude telling me that Professor X is dead. I'm like, he ain't dead because he was in the intro. Why would they even put him in the intro if he was dead? So it's like but I'm gonna tell you something that's interesting, man. Just the little nuances, man. I noticed when they did the intro, which I was just really fanboying over. Of course, they had the original music, they revamped it, but they revamped the actual intro too. Because if you notice, if you go back and watch it, <coughs> um, Warpath was actually in the original. Um, um James probably it might have been um Thunderbird, I don't know. So he was part of Magneto's group. And they took him out. Um, and I can't remember who they replaced him with. And then two, the gentleman for fours. Is it the same one that, that voiced him in the original series? Because he had some speaking dialogue in the first series, but it wasn't that much. But um, but yeah, man, they had a sentinel at, at, in the middle, and you know, they clashed and stuff. I mean, it was just those little things, man. They um, that really did a lot. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say this too, and I'm gonna show this one last article, and because people will be tripping and stuff. But let me, uh, voice acting was on point, story was on point. Um, it's no secret sunspots in the show, so it's interesting to see what they're gonna do with him. They teased him, you know, because of course news. This ain't no spoiler. But he's supposed to be a member of the team, of course. But how he's going to become a member of the team is kind of up in the air right now. But everything was done so well. Action was done well. Dude, Rogue Bulldog in a Sentinel was just amazing to me. Like, the fight scenes in that was just like the comic book just popping the life. All in all, man, if I had to give it a score, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. It was a 10 out of 10. Try, not trying to look at it from an um, uh, from a biased perspective as me being an X-Men fan. 10 out of 10, easy. And if we could, if we could expect the same intensity from the first two episodes for the rest of these other eight episodes, man, I hope this series lasts 15 seasons till I'm 60. Real talk. So you want to drop four? <laughs> Thank you, dude. Well, you know, there's been it's been a rumor where they said that they were thinking about it might be on the table, but they were thinking about uh, uh, doing the the Spider Man show back in the day. Which, if they actually re revitalize that, that'll flow right in line with the X Men because you know that was 
that cartoon was part of a shared universe too because the x-men was in that that cartoon uh the 90s spider-man i think it was amazing but i can't remember um it came on fox fox kids but the x-men was on that show matter of fact wolverine was on the show um captain america and a few other avengers was on that show too so man that would be dope um let's see no it's not mark strange really. oh wow yeah i'm sorry to hear that man yeah just like the guy that 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 voice um cyclops he died i think like three or four years ago and the guy that actually originally voiced magneto did too he died a few years back too but they did a great job with replacing those characters with people that sound as close like i said the guy that plays cyclops he's he to me he sounds just like the dude because that guy that voiced cyclops you know the og a voice actor you know he he did cyclops's voice in all the the versus marvel games and stuff you know yeah dude the second episode yeah that second episode man it was better than the first one and, and, and like I said, if if we, if our expectations are to be based upon those first two episodes, man, I think that's probably going to be one of the best. The it's going to be one of the best products to come out of the, um, out of Disney Plus in regards to Marvel to date. Aside from uh, 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 that gimmick, uh, the second Captain America movie, Winter Soldier, that's still the benchmark for me. So, but yeah, that. Um, it's gonna um it's gonna be good x-men 97 was great so for anybody that is in the chat that haven't seen it or might watch this on the replay please if you got disney plus check it out you know and if you, if you don't have disney plus if you could just hold off and maybe let a few episodes build up and get a free trial of it and watch it and cancel it it's worth it it is worth it um so i agree with you but i don't think disney wants to put money in spider-man they had a couple of yeah but you know what though iconic man let me tell you something this is the thing sony needs to just give up the ghost at this point in time man they are they're making money off of the they're not making money but they're making movies off of the spider-man franchise and the ip that are not making money these movies are being critically panned but yet and still they feel the need to go put out i mean they're about to release a craven movie dude and they've changed the character of Craven so much. It was not even the Craven in the comic book. He's just violent. So, I mean, at, at what point will you say, okay, we just need to make sure that we make money and quit hemorrhaging money, making all these dumb movies and, and get with the program. If they had any sense, it would be like, okay, well, we're going we're gonna to give y'all full reign of spider-man in all his intellectual properties whether it be movies animation blah 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 we require a certain percentage of whatever you make kind of like how they did with the spider-man movies it shouldn't be that hard but then again i don't work in corporate america with sony because i'd be in the boardroom like man y'all are some idiots like y'all fire me y'all y'all just dumb y'all just really like you 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 waste the money they said madam webb now larry is one of the most impractical impartial guys he'll give he'll give anything a chance as bad as it is but he just all right said madam webb was terrible and it, it takes an act of congress for him to call a movie terrible or anything for that matter so i don't know but yeah uh, X-Men 97 is, is, is amazing. And that leads me to this. I see Sony should stick to video games and let someone, uh, yeah. Partner with, with, with Marvel like they did with Spider-Man. The Spider-Man movies through the um, Disney with well, Marvel Studios made more money than the, the movies that they did on their own. They grossed more money. And that's a fact. So I don't know. I, I don't know like some things you you would think are common sense but you know we common folk you know we eat pork and beans with kings and queens like dusty rose we don't know nothing about what corporate america does that you know we don't have the pulse of, of the people because we're we're just 
you know, we're middle classes or whatever they want to call us. So, but this last thing I'm going to show, and then I'm going to show them all. <coughs> this is the reason why I kept this up. Okay. So, just to preface this, you know, X Men has been getting some rave reviews, X Men 97, some stellar reviews. Um, people have been praising it, saying it's great, blah, blah, blah. But you still got uh, a small group of people that want to buck against the system and try to make everything out of something that it's not. So I came across this article earlier today and Gambit's crop top in X-Men 97 is triggering people for the wrong reasons. So the reason why it's triggering people because he's wearing a crop top and according to some people on X, Gambit in X-Men 97, Look what they did to my boy. The show is cursed. So, so cursed. Gambit and X-Men in 97. Dude looks gay. That's not Gambit. I don't know what this dude said because I didn't even, you know, to click on it. Yeah, I'm going to need to search. So I'll get a piece of three months to wear it. <laughs> yeah, that's the Stevie. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's Stevie Richards crop top from the from 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 ECW. But this is the thing, though. Gambit wore a crop top in the first wing. Whenever they had their leisure, like their leisure scenes, especially when they were outside, when they like when it like this when they were playing basketball in these episodes in the first in the first series, Gambit wore a crop top then. I don't get it. Yeah, not everything translates, but 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 of course, but again, this this is set ninety seven, so I mean, you they come on. I mean, is it that hard to suspend your disbelief and imagine that this cartoon is back in nineteen ninety seven as opposed to twenty twenty four? No, yeah, you're absolutely right. Not everything translates to twenty twenty four. I agree. I totally agree. But the, the the series is not set in modern times. That's why I don't get why people are just nitpicking stuff. I don't know what it is with the feet. But anyway, yeah, I don't I don't get that. Thank you. Page me. Did you believe right? It's like, dude, people, I think at this point, people are just trying to find stuff for no reason to 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 complain about. And it's like, if you understand, don't mind the glare in the back. If you understand the premise that this particular series is set in 1997, then you will understand why Gambit has a crop top. And why Jubilee says, pay, or Sunspot says, page me to Jubilee. You know, but, you know, people are going to find fault in everything. So, you know, it, it is one of these, it's just one of those things where people are just, they don't like it and, and they can't find nothing else wrong with the cartoon. So they're just going to nitpick something and just run with it. I'm like, God, man, just enjoy it for what it is. It's a great series so far. Now, if something happens down the road that's questionable, people, of course, are going to say something. It's like the whole thing with, with Morph. And nobody cared about Morph. Don't nobody care about Morph now. Nobody cares about Morph. Nobody cares about Morph. As a long time X Men reader, I never cared about more. I, he wasn't even morph until the uh, the Exiles co comic came out, like in the late nineties. So they say he's a, you know he's non-binary. It's like, why are y'all causing a big fuss over this? Because he's non-binary. Technically, it makes sense to me based on his power set. But at the end of the day, he's not a character that people really care about in the first place. So why this big fuss? It just doesn't make sense to me. It's just a lot of stuff people are just complaining about. For Honestly, who cared about Morph? Nobody. Nobody. And people don't care about Morph now. They just want to find something to complain about. It's complain about sensationalism. It breeds controversy. People just want to sit and talk, sit... Dude, let it go, man. Enjoy it for what it is. Thank you. But see, this is the thing, Iconic. 
if you aren't familiar with the X-Men, and, and thank you, Dan. You see, you think like me. This is the thing. If you are familiar with the mutants, X-Men, X-Men have always been a progressive group. And then some of the stuff that people complain about now was never an issue back in the 80s and 90s. Case in point, one of the first lesbian um, characters in a comic book was on the New Mutants. Um, oh, she's Vietnamese. Uh, Mirage, not Mirage, that's Daniel, Moon, Daniel Moonstar. Uh, Karma. Nobody cared. When North Star got married, like in late, uh, early 2000s, late, two th late 90s, nobody cared nobody cared okay the dude's gay he kind of looks gay and you know no offense to anyone that's gay but that's what people were saying and then they left it alone nowadays people oh my god you can't be this way why not because the x-men have been that way for the longest time stan lee said that the actual group he got the idea of the group and it was based on bigotry and then the great chris claremont took it a step further and that's when he started to interject the things that we now know the x-men for cockroom and wing they set the tone they added banshee they added colossus they added a demonic a demonic looking mutant that was one of the most righteous mutants in the group People are gonna complain about stuff, man, for, for no reason at all. And to me, it makes no sense. If it's something worthwhile to complain about, then do it. But since it's calling the X-Men woke, you don't know anything about the X-Men. Nothing. Because they've been that quote unquote woke forever. And I hate that word. I do. I hate it with a passion. Because it's used so arbitrarily now anytime somebody does something that a person doesn't agree with or doesn't line up with their values they're woke there used to be a different there used to be a time in this country where we could have a difference of opinion without name calling but we can't do that no more regardless of if you're on the left or the right can't do it no more i'm not about to get into no political stuff but y'all get what i'm saying right now these first world problems bro look I've been looking for a house, man, and these houses are high shit. Let me just say that. And I don't care nothing about morph being non-binary, bro. Let me find a house that I can afford. You know, I'm just saying. Dudes is talking about you can't afford to buy groceries. <laughs> you need to eat cereal. <laughs> bro. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, that ain't that ain't good. That's not good for me. So with that being said. <laughs>
I've always loved the archetype of having like the strong guy and then other people that actually have other um like tools. The strong guy man was a cool character, man, and you know, him being the bodyguard of uh, Layla uh, Cheney. Dude, and his the way his powers were set up, like he couldn't take too much or he would actually like he would die, or get hurt, or something like that. I think his his powers are like kinetic based. Okay, so these are a few books I picked up over the past couple of weeks. Um, none, nothing is new because I'm waiting to get to Heroes Con to pick up some um, some uh, Silver Age and Copper Age stuff from the '70s. So, um, X Men Thirty Two. They're about the end of Krakoan era, and I don't know if anybody in the chat is actually up on Krakoa, but that's one. That, Jonathan Hitman had one of the best runs in X-Men in recent history with the Krakoan era. Uh, and I really hate that it's about to come to an end. Because there were some really good stories coming out of it, in my opinion. This is my boy from DC, the, the Big Red Cheese, Shazam, number nine. Um, X-Men Forever. They're shutting down a lot of current X-Men series and they're going to reboot it again in July. Can't stand it, but hey, it is what it is. Um, Resurrection of Magneto, number three. It's been pretty good. That's the Shadow King back there in the back. I've been enjoying this book. I, I tend to pick up a lot of books that DC does, those little mini series and stuff. Picked up like the deceased with the, the vampires and then the one with the zombies. They got this one, Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong. Got that. Fall of the House of X, number three. This is a great series right here, y'all. Uh, it's an indie. Dynamite. Thunder, 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 cat. This is really good. Really good. Uh, as you can see, X Men has been the theme. Dead X Men number three. <coughs> this was a pretty good book. Um, this is an Image Comic um, Adventure Man, but this is like a, a this was a two shot series. Um, it's drawn by Terry Dotson. He actually drew uh, Uncanny for a while. I think he wrote on the book too, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, my boy. Gojira, Godzilla Rivals versus Space Godzilla. And I got a couple of games too. Destroy All Humans, number two for the Xbox Series X. And I got this. Uh, I'm a sucker for the Switch games, man. I like Switch. So, yeah, I'll be sitting my big self up playing a Switch game in a minute. You know and that is it y'all um let's see here man that was a good episode on OGX being on see parts way for them to show some of the things man they do they're gonna show yeah they, they I think they're gonna flesh out that whole summer's connection I wouldn't be surprised if we see um Vulcan we see Vulcan in this series and like I said, they, like like Dan said earlier, they pulled so much from different story arcs within the first two episodes. It's like, dude, it's mm, I can't, man. I'm excited, and I'm gonna tell you something else too. You know, Disney has started to release their stuff on Blu-ray again with that Sony thing. Uh, so some of the Marvel um, productions they're gonna be released on Blu-ray. So I'm assuming they're doing like the Disney Plus shows. I think. I think Miss Marvel is going to get the treatment. WandaVision already got the treatment. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier is getting the treatment. I'm getting those. Miss Marvel's good to me. I don't care what nobody said. But um, yeah, when X Men '97 they dropped that first season on Blu-ray. Oh, it's it's good as got. It's good as got. That's right, Donnie. Heroes Con or bust. I can't wait either, man, because it's going to be a fun time. Heroes Con is in North Carolina, y'all, Charlotte. So some of us in the Comic Hall are going. 
some in the comic community are going. Donnie's going. I have met Donnie. I've been on a live stream with him a couple of times. The two is a cool guy. So when you sit down, man, Donnie, first thing we need to do, man, was the exchange pleasantries. We need to find somewhere that sells some beer and have a cold one. Just chill. And it'll be on me, too. It's only fair they shut down some decent books to start the Hickman era. Yeah, I see that, man. But, yeah, the Hickman era was, was I, I, man, I enjoyed it. Powers of X and House of X and Powers of 10, man. It was some good stuff. But anyway, y'all, man, I appreciate y'all, man, for, for being here. Thank you so much, y'all. Um, I done ran my mouth tonight by myself. So, um, but it's all good. I had a lot to say, and I hope I was entertaining to everybody being up by myself. Um, we should be back next week, and hopefully it will be more than just me. So, um, what we're going to be talking about, I have no idea, but um, there's a couple of ideas that we got brewing um we're supposed to be having um uh, i had to postpone it but we're supposed to be having the creators of tribe comic um uh, i don't know if you all remember um you know the great migration where a lot of the artists and writers created when they first created image comics in the 90s um there was a lot of artists rob lightfield um jim lee uh mcfarlane um Sylvester, mark Silvestri, all of them created the image comics there's a guy named larry stroman um, he actually moved over there too and he created a comic book uh, called Tribe. So at some point we, we should have him on the show. Thank you, Donnie. I appreciate it, man. You know, I wanted to do something, man, because we haven't been on in a while. And, you know, shout out to Chris and his anniversary. Like I said, Matt's doing his thing. Sean might be working. He, he might be outside playing some pickup basketball. I have no idea. X is probably working till the, the midnight hour. Remo, I don't know where he is. Uh, Rico probably chilling somewhere, man, um, looking at some books that came out in the 1700s. So I think I missed somebody. Uh, Larry ain't no telling where he is. He probably reading the X-Men comic books. Sitting, um, well, I don't want to say Indian style because that's that's not politically correct. But he probably sitting in that style on the floor reading some X-Men comic books and stuff. So. But um, thank you, Iconic. I appreciate it, man. Um, like I said, I just wanted to do something, man, because we haven't been on in a minute. And, you know, I ain't, I'm ain't. i like Bone Crusher. I ain't never scared. I do it by myself if I have to. So I just want y'all to be entertained and have some content, man, to look at. So um, one thing I want to say before I actually end this, um, if you're familiar with uh, the show that Larry and I started called X Factor, um, we have good news. We're actually going to show... We're going to um, get back on it. Um, we're returning next week. Um, we are going to, I'm actually going to be setting up the show soon, um, but the show is going to be on Thursday. We typically used to have them on Wednesdays. We've had like a four month hiatus, um, but we're coming back because of course, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of rumors with the, the mutants in the MCU. Um, so the show next week, we're going to be, we're going to be discussing the first two episodes of um, X Men '97, and then we're probably going. Well, we're probably we're going to be discussing the third episode because that drop it drops every Wednesday. So Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We both work for the same company. We get off at the same time. So 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, set your reminders for it. Hopefully, we won't be on till two or three o'clock in the morning. But we will be talking some mutant stuff, X Men '97, and anything else, possibly some Deadpool stuff. It's Deadpool, by the way, uh, I think everybody and their cousin gonna be in that movie, like literally. I think every five minutes you're probably gonna see a cameo of somebody in that movie. So, people that we've seen and people we haven't seen. So, um, but anyway, it has been a pleasure, y'all, and I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all are really a good crowd, and um, I thank you so much. X-Men 97 just ran up all day. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let me just say this. And I've said this. I'm going I'm to try to find that episode. I'm going to try to find that episode this week. And I'm going to air it. If you can, if you can meet us um, Thursday, I kind of... I said this on a previous show. I said, and I'm paraphrasing myself, but I said something along the lines that when the X-Men show up, of course, at that time, we I had no idea that they were going to do the X-Men. They were going to re revamp or, you know, bring back X-Men 92, 97. I said, 
at at some point <clears throat> the x-men are going to show up in some capacity and when they show up everything is on the table we've already seen it with deadpool um cassandra nova's book don't know why that book was being sold raw for 30 dollars at one point but it was shout out to uh g-man if you're still in the chat he ain't okay me a copy because i refuse to pay because it's part of um, um i'm actually collecting new x-men x-men legacy to complete that run and i didn't pick it up when it first dropped of course i didn't pick it up during my collecting that series when they said she was going to be in the movie, that book skyrocketed. I said, look, I'm not paying no $30 for that book. He A-OK'd me a copy, and I want to say Kenny's comic kid, Jeff, A-OK'd me a copy of that book. And I really appreciate it because I wasn't paying $30 for it. So I'm um, about a few issues short of completing that run. <laughs> hey, Dan. Dude, let me tell you something. I hope she plays a janitor in that that movie. <laughs> Do you realize though? Hey, you know what though, Dan? Serious business though. If she is Layla Cheney, oh my god! I think Layla Cheney showed up in a. I think it was New Mutants Annual One. I think Bill Sinkovich did the cover. And um, bro, do you realize, man? You know, I'm gonna have to. Hey, 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 Dan. Let's 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 do this. Let's do this, sir. You you go to your local comic book shops and you pick up all the copies of. Uh, hold up, let me check and see when Leela Cheney's first appearance was, and we'll find out. This is for everybody in the chat too. We'll make a little quick bow. Leela Cheney. Okay, bro. I know my stuff. I know my stuff. This is her first appearance. New Mutants Annual Number One. Dopes and Bill Sinkovich cover too. Go pick them up. Because if she is Leela Cheney in that movie, bro, everybody going to be like, yeah, everybody going to be like, who's Leela? But if Taylor Swift is attached to her, bro, it's going to be on these top 10 lists. I'm telling you, man. And all the, the whatever they call them, uh, the Swifties or whatever they call them, they're going to be looking for that book. And I'm going to be on eBay talking about buying now. Five hundred dollars and sixty-two cents. <laughs> yeah, it was number one. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. Yeah, that cover is 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 dope, man. Bill Sinkovich, man, I loved his work when he was on on um, the New Mutants. He's on there for a short time, but yeah, especially the Demon Bear cover. That that cover is dope. All right, a couple first. That it might be. Let me see. Well, it just says first appearance of Lila Taney. By the way, this is the key collab that I, I ain't gonna lie. I, I don't keep it on my, my phone for speculation purposes. I just keep it on there because it, it's a good resource for keys. Um, and that's the God honest truth. So it doesn't say, I mean, it might be some other people in there, Donnie, but it just says that it was her first appearance, but who knows? But yeah, um, anyway, it's time for me to go got some tv watching to do um catch up on one piece yeah I'm, I'm that dude that like that crap i ain't gonna call it crap but anyway it's been real folks uh i appreciate y'all we'll be back hopefully next saturday like i said next thursday 11 p.m eastern standard time larry and i will be uh, uh open to uh, the x fact show and uh we will be talking about the first three episodes of x-men 97 so Dan, Iconic, Donnie, if y'all free, whoever else is in the chat, y'all come on, man. Join me. Uh, let's see. No, I didn't, but I don't know about no One Piece shoes, man. I saw some, some I ain't gonna lie, man, some, some Naruto Crocs. It was a couple of them, man. I, I spent too much money as it is on crap, man. Like, you see that book bookshelf behind me back in the back? up under that vent it's man vintage games you know what i got a problem but i'm glad i got the problem that i have because i could be spending my money on crack and i don't so i have something to show for it 
So, um, anyway, y'all have a good night, man. And I will be talking to y'all on the later for a while. It has been real, and I appreciate y'all showing up. So, with that being said, on behalf of the Comic Call crew that is not here, y'all have a good one. I am out. <laughs>